<laughs> I am really uncomfortable right now. I'm 16 in high school, and instead of lounging on my couch watching Netflix, I'm staring into a spotlight. <laughs> instead of comfortably chatting with my friends, my voice is shaky. <laughs> in the past, this would have made me think, I don't belong in this place. Four years ago, during the COVID-19 pandemic, I stared into the loading screen of my computer, hands fidgeting and heart pounding, as I waited to begin the WebEx meeting of my first class here at Colorado Mountain College, CMC. I was in eighth grade, an eighth grader in college, and I couldn't help thinking, I don't belong in this place. I've been taking college classes here at CMC every year since then. And while surrounded by college students, adults, professionals, it's easy to feel I don't belong in this place. The discomfort I felt in eighth grade and the discomfort I still feel now at 16, I have to imagine is not just specific to me, but is something we may all encounter going forward. I've learned though that this discomfort I've felt the discomfort many of us feel when entering new territory, marks the barriers we need to confront to create our sense of place. However, escaping these barriers is only an option if we are aware that we are bound, both by the expectations of others and our expectations of ourselves. Each one of us is like a bird that's been caged throughout our lives, told where we belong, where we'll be safe, and often it's so convincing, we can lose sight of the bars around us. After growing familiar with the comfort of a cage, the world beyond can start to feel more daunting than exciting. But we need to remember, birds were born to fly free. It's why they have wings, and it's why we shouldn't restrict ourselves to the places, the cages, where we're told we belong. Although we often feel limited by others' expectations, we can break free of them to create a place for ourselves. Creating your place involves discomfort. It requires change, but it can also produce a place of your own. We need to begin by acknowledging what can force us into these cages. External expectations imposed upon us can leave us feeling trapped somewhere we don't want to be. These restrictive expectations are reflected even in a name that also, ironically, is equated with freedom, Nelson Mandela. Many of us are familiar with this name, the name of the man who successfully led the struggle against apartheid in South Africa. But Mandela's birth name was Kholi Lhasa. When Mandela, in his autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, Mandela explains how his white teacher reassigned him the Christian name Nelson because white people were unwilling to pronounce an African name or considered it uncivilized to have one. Mandela's wings were clipped as he was expected to give up his identity, his culture, restricting him with this new name. A few weeks ago, I visited Robben Island in South Africa, where Mandela was imprisoned for his efforts to end apartheid and achieve freedom and equality for all races. Mandela was put in a literal cage because he was expected to be complacent as the white minority confined him somewhere he didn't want to be. While Mandela was limited by a racial barrier, we may also be limited by other traits, such as gender or age. The barriers we face can be far less extreme than Mandela's while still being valid. For example, I've experienced an age barrier in my academic pursuits. This age barrier first became apparent to me when I had to transfer schools after fifth grade because I was not allowed to move ahead one grade level in math, despite having all the qualifying grades and test scores. Then, as freshmen in high school, my friends and I wanted to take a college biology class here at CMC but our school expressed concerns because of our age. So many people expected me to fail because I was too young, and my age somehow discredited my love for learning and ability to succeed. As my pursuits and passions were made unnecessarily difficult and uncomfortable, I found out that others might limit me from flying free because it was simpler to keep me caged. And that's when I realized 
We are faced with the choice between the discomfort of lingering somewhere we don't want to be or the discomfort of putting in the work to escape. We'll experience discomfort either way, but only breaking free will help us explore our potential. So how can we escape the expectations that keep us caged and create our place? This requires pushing through our discomfort with proactive change. Like when, as Erin Blakemore in National Geographic states, Mandela fled home to become a part-time law student at Wits University and began to practice law, starting the nation's first black law firm. Mandela broke through barrier after barrier by actively challenging society's low expectations of what black South Africans could accomplish. Then, as Blakemore states, Mandela joined the African National Congress, a group that agitated for the civil rights of black South Africans. Seeking out support from a community of others who wanted to create a place for black South Africans was essential to Mandela's success. He even broke unjust laws targeting black South Africans and spent 27 years of his life in prison to send a message that would have to be heard to achieve freedom for himself and every other citizen in South Africa. And while I stood on Robben Island and peered into Mandela's seven by nine foot cell, I was struck by his words of optimism and determination. It is what we make out of what we have, not what we are given. Mandela showed that our place in this world is not limited to where we are told to be. Rather, our place is the place we make for ourselves, out of our dreams, sense of self, perseverance. While the cages I've encountered nowhere near compared to those of Mandela, the challenge is the same for all of us. We face barriers that either keep us in place or, when overcome, allow us to create our place elsewhere. Creating my place in my academic pursuits required me to accept the inevitable discomfort of overcoming barriers and find ways to push through that discomfort. One way was welcoming support from the people people who believed I was capable of much more than what others expected of me. My mom was the one to advocate for me to move ahead a grade level in math when I was in fifth grade. And when my school refused, she found a school for me, Carbondale Middle School, that helped me challenge myself. By eighth grade, I was two grade levels ahead in math and still felt that I could go further. So my dad, a professor here at CMC, helped me register for an online college algebra class the spring semester of my eighth grade. Taking opportunities my parents helped create for me was essential to breaking free of an imposed age barrier. After breaking free, though, I had to create a place for myself amid the uncomfortable unknowns I was exploring. So I changed my mindset. The unknowns didn't scare me. I felt exhilarated spending my Monday evenings in my first night class. The challenges weren't discouraging. I found satisfaction in conquering my college exams and proving to myself I was capable. I channeled my nervous energy into embracing a new part of me and sculpting my setting to accommodate me instead of convincing myself I didn't fit there. Like Mandela, I didn't let expectation and discomfort override my passion. The sweat, tears, and effort required to create our place are worth it because they allow us to feel the wind under our wings as we're fueled by possibility. Breaking free of expectations can allow you to create a place of your own where you may find an unbeatable sense of belonging. When Mandela was released from prison, he was elected president of South Africa and negotiated an end to apartheid. During my time in South Africa, I saw cultures intermingling in places from cafes to beaches, scenes that wouldn't have been possible without Mandela. This was evidence of how Mandela helped achieve greater freedom and belonging, not just for himself, but for a nation. When we create our place, it opens a door for others to do the same. Mandela's story has shown me I can walk through that door too. I'm now on track to have my associate's degree from CMC a semester before my high school graduation. <laughs> I've learned fascinating information and invaluable skills in my experience as a college student. And while my experience at CMC has been intimidating and uncomfortable at times, I started to look forward to my college public speaking class. 
I got a little thrill out of doing my calculus homework. I know, crazy. <laughs> It's hard for me to believe I came to love being surrounded by people older than me, spending most of my free time doing really challenging coursework, but I did. Because it isn't about finding a place that's waiting for you, but creating your place yourself. It is up to you to create your place in this world and break free of your cage. Imagine yourself defying the expectations holding you back in your life to create your place. Be the example that changes others' restrictive mindsets. Embrace your traits as strengths, not weaknesses. Accept support from people who trust your judgment of your own capabilities. And inspire others to seek out their sense of place, too. We have the power to rise above challenges, bursting with birdsong beyond the bars if we only push through the discomfort to break free. Now, I'm not quite naive enough to be telling you you can do anything, but I'm asking you to do something. Because maybe not every time, but sometimes you can transform the discomfort into an extraordinary sense of place. The fulfillment I've found in creating my place outweighs the discomfort that may remain. While the spotlight is still blinding, my head is held high. While I'm still a little shaky, I'm smiling. Even if the fear of falling still lingers, the thrill of broadening your horizons and soaring through the open sky makes it all worthwhile. Thank you. <laughs>